in church on first Wednesday in April. Let's get fired up one more time in the house of God. I love April at Church of the Highlands. It's gonna be a fabulous month with all the things that are happening and you wanna be a part of all those things, but always like taking a moment, welcome all those that are at one of our campuses. We are one church. Uh, that is in many locations, and we love you, we love you. Maybe you're watching online. We want you to know God cares about you. And then all those that are watching from our correctional facilities, and I just want to push pause there for a moment because I think it's important for us to know because of your giving and the faithfulness of your tithe and offering, you're such a faithful church. I believe you're the most generous church on the planet, and because of that, just the month of March in our correctional ministries, we're right now in 25 of the 28 facilities out there. Pastor Chris's heart is to be in all of those. Hey, just in the month of March, in the services that we had, 440 precious people gave their life to Jesus Christ. Come on. That's a reflection of generosity. And then about 400 dream teamers were there serving. And we're not going to stop with being in 28 of the correctional facilities. Pastor Chris's heart is for us to keep going. And now we're going to be able to start serving in all of our juvenile and youth detention centers. And there's a lot of those. I think that is super important. And I know we're going to really the heart of it is to bring a motion experience into those environments and then be able to let some of our Highlands College students participate with that. I think it's just a great idea. And I just want to thank you for that. I get so many different reports from the correctional ministry, and I wanted to give them a big shout out. So now let's clap our hands for all those who have joined us at our campuses online and at the correctional facilities. It's so good to see you. I've missed you. Uh, I got injured about a month ago and uh, had an injury, and I know many of you think it was March Madness, and I, was, I do have one more year of eligibility just in case someone's watching. <laughs> And so I entered back into March Madness and just wanted to let maybe one of the coaches at Auburn or Alabama know that I still have one year. Probably Auburn more than Alabama would meet me at this point. And, uh, but anyway, I saw that out there. Um, but uh, anyway, it didn't happen like that. It's not a great story. Uh, I'm, I'm a 59 year old man that was jumping out of my truck like I was 16 years old. And I hit some water and I slipped and I tore my hamstring. And so uh, I, I just, but thank God for a good doctor and good surgery, and a good physical therapist, and a good wife. Y'all know what I'm talking about, a good family. And thank God for my pastor. So I've been on the IR. I've been on injured reserves, uh, but I'm feeling better. And I'm so grateful for our pastor who said, hey, let's get you back in the rotation. So I was so excited to be here tonight to be able to preach a little bit. So I'm thankful to Pastor Chris to be able to let me be here. I was going to be in one of the Sundays, but uh, I took time. And I was on crutches too. I just didn't feel like getting my preach on with crutches. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Man like me, my size, don't need to be on crutches on stage. That would be another handy, if you know what I'm talking about. So I try to stay away from that. But uh, what a weekend we experienced. I was here this weekend at all the services. What an incredible weekend that we experienced here. Uh, of course, at all the locations, the amount of people, the numbers. And one of the great things you know, the heart of this church is every number has a name and every name matters to God and matters to us. That's why we want to take you on a journey and be in your life, whether it's groups or being able to help you take a next step. But I was here. I had a great time. I actually had somebody stop me in the foyer said, hey, man, I thought you moved. I hadn't seen you in a while. I thought you moved. It's like, don't think moved on me was my hamstring moved from its bone and we had to move it back. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But, uh, but it's just amazing what God did across the church life. And you'll hear a lot about what God is doing across church, uh, the church at all the campuses. But I just want to say this. I am so thankful for a pastor who just stays on mission. And I think that's important in the world that we're living in today. He stays on mission and he stays on great commission. I'm so grateful for our pastor. He's just all these years, week in and week out, he just never drifts from the heart of God. And I'm grateful for that. I think it's one of the greatest messages I've heard. And so let's clap our hands for Pastor Chris. And thank God for a pastor who stays on mission. I love it. I love it. I really love the message. And so thankful for that. But I want to share a thought with you uh, tonight that I believe is like a big blinking arrow uh, to what God is going to do this weekend. And uh, this weekend is a don't miss weekend. I'm telling you, don't miss this weekend. 
uh, because not only are we going to be talking a little bit about God's plan for your life, but also all of our lives, not just a select group, all of our lives, but we're going to give an opportunity for people to get baptized. And I think that is so big. I know I got baptized after I came to faith. And, it, and, and I remember the person said this in the room. If you're thinking about getting baptized, I can promise you it's not the devil telling you that. It is God telling you that. So go ahead and get baptized. And so if you're thinking it, just go ahead and wade in the water, my brother. And, and it, you say, what do I bring? No, no, just come here. We've, we, we have a church that, that has a plan for you when you get here. We've got everything you need. So I'm looking forward to just hundreds and hundreds of people getting baptized across church life. But I want to talk for a few minutes around the idea that I believe is going to lend to what God is going to say in this very important weekend that's right around the corner. I want to talk for a few minutes on the idea of all together, all together. So let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the presence of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for communion time and Lord, being able to just get prayed for, how important that is. And Lord, we thank you for what you're going to say to each of our hearts. Lord, thank you that every person matters, what's happening in their individual life. Lord, we believe that you want to speak to them. You want to bring clarity out of your word. So God, bring clarity again like you do every time when we open up your word. The power is in the word of God. So we love you, we love you. In Jesus' name, and everybody said a good amen. Turn to the person next to you and say, I'm so glad you made it to church. Come on, look at the other person that was your second choice and tell them, I will see you on the coming weekend. Same place, same time. You know, as I read the Gospels, many of you know I love reading the Gospels. When I have free time, I read a lot of the Gospels, and I've been spending a lot of time reading the Gospels the last couple of months, and I've been reading for some reason in First and Second Chronicles. I've been enjoying that and reading some Proverbs, but uh, really enjoying the Gospels lately. And one of the things I love when I come across these moments in the life of Christ our Savior, when he's having these dialogue with people that think that they are smarter than him. You got to love how that turns out because we're, we're living on this side of it. So you know when that person eases into that conversation, you're like, oh yeah, I'm about to get some popcorn. I'm pulling up a chair. I'm about to see how this turns out for my man that, that thinks he's so smart and he's going to one up the Savior. Hello, you're going to one up the fullness of the Godhead in your conversation. And so I love these moments where they come and they ask Jesus questions. And then what I love about it is how Jesus gives like HD clarity, like crystal clear 2020 clarity. When, he, when he's asked a question, he's not fuzzy. It's, it's not kind of vague. It's not confusing. He just goes right to it. And you know what I love about it too? Normally it's a simple answer. And I love simplicity. Don't, man, put them cookies on the shelf that I can get to. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I, need, I, I, need, I like simplicity. I like you to tell me what's going on, and Jesus does this. And there's probably nowhere better that he does this than in Matthew chapter 22, as he is ending up that public ministry, and he has turned his heart to the cross. So we know that just chapters later, we'll be right into those moments of the Passion Week. We've been talking about that. We experienced that all through the month of March and the messages that we receive. But here is one that's leading up to it. It's in Matthew 22, verse 34 through 40. I love reading. I've read it probably 30 times in the last 24 hours. I just think it's amazing. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. Let's give it a shot because we're so much smarter than the Sadducees because we are the Pharisees. Pharisees are so much better than the Sadducees. Just brilliant. They're lame. They get together. One of them got selected. They selected one that was an expert of the law. I mean, they just talked who's going to handle this question, who's going to go against the Savior, because everything that Jesus said was normally an opposite of what the Sadducees and the Pharisees were trying to put on the people. The Pharisees and the Sadducees were trying to pull the people apart and trying to put so much on them that no one could ever achieve it. And Jesus would say things that were so opposite to them. So they selected like the smartest guy. He was like summa cum laude. Uh, he just had a lot of who's who, a lot of honor roll stuff. He's an expert in the law. So he comes and the Bible says 
he's going to test him with a question. So they've thought about this question. They've researched the question. They've debated it. They've gone back and forth. So he comes to Jesus, teacher. You know, he's, you know, he's fine. You know, when somebody's feeling themselves, you know, like, oh, I feel good right now. Oh yeah, I got a good one. I'm about to get you. You know, when you feel, feel really good about something that you're getting ready to say, like you've practiced it, uh, you've got it down pat, you're good in this area, you know, you, you excel in this area. So he goes, he's, oh, but he's feeling strong. He says, teacher, got one for you. Need to know something. Which is the greatest commandment in the law? Where my boy's at? You could tell that they, they, you know, they're gathered around him. Oh, God, that was amazing. Oh. <laughs> Fabulous. Woo. I love what Jesus did. Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. Then he says, hold up, hold up. And the second is like it. They're tied together. There's two of them, but there's one of them. It's two and one. He said, the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law, all the law. And the prophets, all the law, and everything that the prophets taught, all of them are on these two, two in one commandment. He is no longer an expert. He's a little spurt. <laughs> I preached this one time down the bayou. My, my, my wife and I, we pastored a church in Louisiana for 20 years, and I got asked to go preach uh, down by French Settlement over by Marpaul. It's down the bayou. And great crawfish down there, A2V, you eat well. So I said yes on the invitation based on the boudin. You know what I'm talking about? I will preach for boudin. And so I went and preached for boudin. And I go down to a little French settlement church down by Marpaul. And I get down there and we preach. We have church. And I preached on this text. I'll never forget. I preached on this text. And I get done. And, and this is a different community. Uh, and it, the, the, some of them were raised like the way I was raised in some environments that I was raised in. And, and, and the, the religious experience is heavy. The religious experience is a lot. And I'm not going to talk about what, what it was, but it's just a lot. And so when I got done preaching, I'll never forget this Cajun man walked up to me at the end of the, the, the day. And he walked up and said, uh, uh, Pastor, I need, I need to talk to you. He said, there's no way that Jesus said that, that he summed it up like that. There's a typo in your Bible. He told me, he said, there's a typo there. Because it can't be that way. It can't be that. There's no way that Jesus took all the law and everything that the prophets, hundreds of years, thousands of years of the law and the prophets, and he summed it up. You mean to tell me that I could take the whole Bible and put it in a bag and hang it on that hook? There's got to be a typo. I said, oh, there's not a typo. There's a typo with mankind because mankind is always trying to figure out how to work themselves unto God's goodness. Because we are saved by grace. It's the love of God that compels mankind. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him will not perish, but have eternal life. I don't know why it is there's something about us that wants to put more on it. We want to complicate things. Jesus said, you can take it all, put it in a bag, and hang it on that hook. Because I am the complete fulfillment of everything and all the law and everything that the, Matthew talks about that. Jesus says in Matthew several times that I am the fulfillment of law. I didn't come to abolish the law. I didn't come to put aside the words of the prophets. Who you're looking at fulfills it all. I love the words of Colossians that the fullness of the Godhead, the fullness of the Old Testament, the fullness of the New Testament, the fullness of the gospel, it all dwells in the preeminence of Christ Jesus. 
And the lawyer didn't know who he was talking to. Jesus said, it's right here. Love God. And the lawyer just says, it, it can't be that way. There's just, there's just more to it. There, we've, we've, we've added so much to it. Matter of fact, for for what Moses gave and what the prophets gave, they had added a few things to it. They'd expanded the law. They had expanded. Now there was like 613 laws and and, and, uh, and rules and regulations. They just kept expanding it and kept bringing it a little further, a little more uh, as it got further out from Moses, as it got further out from, uh, from the scriptures and all the things that we know. They just wanted to make it a little broader, a little more. Let's just put some more to it. Let, let's have some small ones. Let's have have some medium ones. Let's have some large ones. Let's have some XL ones. And then let's have some double X ones for Dito. Come on, somebody. <laughs> they just kept adding and making them more and more and more. And Jesus shows up and said, you've added so much to the people and you've so divided them and you've so pulled them apart and you've made it in a way that no one seems possible that they can ever be pleasing to God. They can never walk away from shame or condemnation. That, that it's never going to be possible. I'm going to bring it all back together because I want them to know that in me, they are joined together. In me, I am the fulfillment. I am everything that they're looking for. The lawyer just is stumped by that. That's not what he expected. He was not looking for that. I love how this takes place because Jesus says that uh, I am the fullness, I'm the completeness, I'm the wholeness, I'm the totality of the gospel. And I want you to kind of follow me here that as Jesus is speaking, he's letting him know that everything in God and everything that we need in God and everything that we need in fulfillment and really everything that we need in purpose, that all of those things resides in Jesus. He is the perfecter of God. He is the perfecter of the gospel. It is three in one. He is the alpha and the omega. He's the beginning and the end. So, so he, he's, he's all of it. He's every. I think it's important for us to understand that. And then he looks and Jesus says, I, I, I want you, I hear everything that you're saying, but you can hang it all on this hook. He just says those simple words. I, I've read them over and over again. Those simple words, love God. We can hear that and think also that's got to be a typo because that just, because we see love in a different way and we're not sure exactly what he's explaining to each of us in our lives and to our homes and what we walk with. But what he says in that, because when he adds love God with all of your heart and all of your mind and all of your soul, and of course, we're the temple of the Holy Spirit, so all of your body, all of your soul, what he's saying is you love God totally. You just love him totally, like 100% love God. Just love him surrendered and love him submitted and, and love him with everything. It's a love that will be bigger, he says, when you love him with all your heart and all your mind and all of your soul and your thoughts and everything that's going on. This love is bigger than your emotions. This love will sustain all of your feelings and all of your appetites and all of the addictions that come our way. It's bigger than all of the sad, tough circumstances. There's a love that's greater than all those things. It's a love that can handle any situation that is thrown at. It's a complete love. It's a love that will direct your thoughts. It will sustain your mind. It will invade your mind and invade your body and invade your soul. And it's a love that will actually bring change to your whole life. It's just a love that changes everything. All of your actions. You could submit all of your attitudes to it. Just, just give me yourself. Give me the good, give me the bad, give me the ugly. Don't hold anything back. Don't let any room in your life be a place that I can't go into. Don't lock out anything. Let me invade all of your Love God completely with everything. Everything you need is in the love of God. Just give yourself to me, all of you, everything. Because it all starts with the love for our love for God. And if you're loving him, then you can live a life for God. It's a love for God and it's a life for God. And the lawyer just thinks, just, there's just no way. I can't believe you've said that. They're, I mean, when you look at how these, they, they were raised and how the Pharisees and the Sadducees put so much weight and Jesus was constantly in this debate and this argument with them. Why? Because there's got to be 
more of that. What about the groupings of the law? What about all the lists? There's a hundred things you need to do, not just love God. Oh, what about all the compartments that we've created and all the categories that we've created? No, no, no. And then Jesus says, well, well, let me just give you one more. And I bet the lawyer's thinking, oh, now we're getting into the categories. Now we're getting into the compartments. Now I can do something. Now I could be amazing. Now I can make it all about me because I'm so good. He says, well, the other thing is going to be real hard for you Sadducees and Pharisees. You got to love your neighbor as yourself. You got to love others. Love God. When you love God with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul, there's something that will flow out of that. There will be a love for others. So hang on to that. And that's what Jesus said in first, I mean, that's what first John tells us about Jesus describing this love. First John 4, 19, 20, 21. This is something good to read constantly when you have to deal with difficult people. And I know nobody deals with difficult people. Okay. Look at these verses. Verse 19, first John 4. We love because he first loved us. We love because of his first love for us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates his brother and sister is a liar. Whoa, that got heavy real quick. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. I love verse 21. This is so important in the world that we're living in today because everybody's fired up. Everybody's a little little intense and it's hard to get the image. There's just a lot going on these days. It says, and he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. Can I have a good amen? Amen. He says, you do those things? Let's go. Let's go live an amazing life. The enemy fights that. Do you know, it's just got to be harder. I know when I came to Christ, you know, I was just the idea of, you know, there's got to be, it's got to be harder as I begin to serve God. When does it get complicated? Because I had some people tell me, it's going to get real complicated. You're never going to make it. I'll never forget when I gave my life to Christ. I showed up with some old friends, and they looked, and they said, you live for God? That's never going to happen. He said, the church is about to confuse you. It's going to get complicated and real confusing. It's just, and and sometimes I I, I want to say this to everyone who even made a a commitment for Easter. When you went from that maybe C to B or to A, all this kind of trajectory of people changing their lives and making a change. If you're not careful, you start thinking, oh gosh, I've given my life to Christ. Now all this has has to happen. What about this and that? And and, and what about that and this? And what about them and those? And uh, I just know that I'm not going to make it, so I've got to give up and and, and live a life that's lesser than God because it's going to get super confusing confusing and all these things are going to happen because it's just got to be hard. It's got to be heavy because the Pharisees were so good at making it heavy. And Jesus says, I'll tell you how heavy it is. It's as heavy as my love for you. And it's heavy as you loving me with everything. That's how hard and heavy it is. You love me with everything, totally surrendered, totally committed, giving me and let the love of God invade every part of of your life and you'll be sustained by that and then it'll flow out of your life to all those around you it's an amazing thing uh, my future daughter-in-law gave me a story she shared a story with me that I thought made so much sense around this idea she had a conversation with one of her young little cousins she was taking care of and and the, the little young cousin told her that she wanted to be an astronaut to be an astronaut that's a big one to choose I don't think I ever came up with astronaut I always wanted to fill a vending machine when I was young. That was my goal in life, <laughs> fill a vending machine. Brother wanted to get some honey buns. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I just thought you ate as much honey buns as you want. And uh, Lane said this. I, I, she said, that's awesome. You know, but to become an astronaut, you have to study real hard, a lot. You have to get real strong physically. You got to go to college a lot. Then you're going to have to go to grad school and do a bunch of stuff at NASA said she looked at me and said, well, that's just four things. (laughs) Just a few things, just a few things. And I thought about the innocence and the childlike faith. Oh gosh, help us to realize that it's just a few things. I mean, I love how Pastor Chris teaches us. He says, hey, know God, repent, give your life to Christ, be baptized. I mean, how important is that? Just know God. Then, hey, let's find some freedom in our life. 
Maybe find some relationships and let there be some accountability where you can get free in your life and you can deal with those things from yesterday and, 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 and they can be redeemed and be restored and all the things. And then guess what? Let's discover some purpose, how God has wired you because we're going to make a difference together. You see that and you think, wow, is that, that's it. Hey, and guess what? Give us one year of your life and do those things and watch the change happen. No, no, there's got to be a typo. No, there's not. Love God with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul, and love our neighbor as ourselves. Because you know what's happening today? The devil is very good at confusing us and frustrating us. And, and it's just, he, he's constantly trying to divide us and pull us apart and compartmentalize our life and, and all these different things where, you, hey, listen, you can't do all that. You, you can go to church on Sunday, but you're not going to be able to live for God on the other days. You're not going to be able to act, treat people because you know you don't like people and you know how this works. And, and, and the devil's constantly dividing. Why? Because when you're divided, you won't make it. He divides the church and he divides the home. He divides marriage and he pulls us apart, disconnects us. He's always, why? Because he doesn't want us realizing to hang our life on that hook. He's wanting us to tell, he's telling us and deceiving us that you can't do that. There's just way too many things going on and you'll never make it. Amen. So, I, you know, my dad was a hard worker. You know, he's a hard, hard worker. And so he didn't have a lot of time, but my dad loved TV dinners. Ooh, my dad loves some TV dinners. And I love some TV dinners. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And I went and got me some today. This is Hunger Man. Now, let me tell you something, guys. Every once in a while, you need a Hungry Man Salisbury steak. Salisbury steak, that's how I say it. And you need one of these, and then you need to run a chainsaw just to let you know. Just do those every once in a while. Go get a TV dinner and run a chainsaw. But you got, you got to love this because, I mean, they're, they're a bit, look at that. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. There's that Salisbury steak right there. This is an upgraded one. You got potatoes, and you use that gravy, and then you got green beans, and they sneak a little brownie in the middle. Mmm. This is, this is a, a TV dinner. It's compartmentalized. All these little areas, I'll show you another one here. It's kind of the same one, because I bought two of them, and I ate one for lunch, if y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Brother has some Salisbury's day at about one o'clock. <laughs> Feeling strong today. I know some of you like quinoa, and you like kale, and you want to go get some, some, a bowl. Hey, once in a while, you need this bowl. So... Here's what happens. The enemy says, no, 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 no. Compartmentalize your life. Oh, you can go to church on Sunday. Oh, yeah. You can do your duty, go to church on Sunday. But you can do you on Tuesday. And then you be mean and hate people on Thursday. And then on the weekend, you can get wild. <laughs> you, you just compartmentalize your life. And the enemy wants to divide us and compartmentalize our life. And, 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 and it's, it's, it's a constant distraction of pulling us apart, disconnecting our life. Hey, for us to be divorced from our purpose, divorced from meaning. And it just puts us on all these little places. No, 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 no. You, you, and, and the TV dinner kind of puts the green beans here, the mashed potato, brownie, Salisbury steak. Listen, it, can't, it can't be together. It's not joined together. He, he divides the church. He divides a home. He divides relationships. All these things happen. It says there's no way. What you learn on Sunday does not need to impact your work. What you get a hold of in small group, do not let it impact your finances. You stay stingy, stingy. No, 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 no. It doesn't need to impact the way you speak to people or your language or how you, your motives or all these things. Keep it all separate. Do your Sunday thing, but don't let it overflow into your Wednesday, into your work, into your speak, into your profession. Don't let any of that happen. He lives our life that way, but yet God in the Bible, and when you look at it, we're all together. It's a little bit like a chicken pot pie. Oh, come on, don't hate. A little bit like that. There's a lot in there. You got peas, you got peas, you got peas, you got carrots, you got carrots, you got some chicken, you got some gravy. 
I mean, and it's all in one place. It's all together. And so the enemy is trying to divide us, compartmentalize your life. Oh, don't get baptized. You don't need to get baptized. Oh, no, 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 no. That's a Sunday thing. Because baptism may affect your workplace. A friend may see it. People may think you're real serious now. No, 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 no. Just stay in that little compartment. Live your life this way. And the Bible says, no, 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 no. I want you in the big platter of God's house, of God's ways. This is the will of God. All together. All together. KJ made us a chicken Petrazzini. And when I got done eating, it looked like that. <laughs> Me and my son. There was all kinds of stuff in it. Mushrooms, onions, carrots, pasta, cheese, gravy. I don't know all that was in it, but it was just all together. It wasn't separated. All together. You know what it sounds like to me? Sounds like one of my most beautiful pictures in the Bible, which I feel like we have here. It's Acts chapter 2, verse 38 through 47. Peter replied, Repent and be baptized. Repent. Sometimes I have people tell me, I don't like that word repent. You're always talking about repenting. That's such a church word. No, that's a Bible word. Baptism is a Bible word. Every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, all who are far off, for all whom the Lord God will call. With many other words, he warned them. He pleaded with them, save yourself from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted the message were baptized and about 3,000 people were added to the number that day. And then here's one of the most beautiful pictures in all the Bible. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching to fellowship, to togetherness, to the breaking of bread of prayer. Pray together. Everyone was filled with all at many wonders and signs. This is a year of miracles that were performed by the apostles. All the believers were together. They were all together and had everything in common. They were just sharing and living life in, in, in context of, of, hey, what's going on with you? Let me carry your burden. What's going on? Let me pray for you. Let's worship together. Let's do life together. And, and they sold their property and possessions to give to everyone in need. They have a legacy offering. They, they were generous. They were helping people. And every day they continued to meet together. Every day they were coming together, not living a compartmentalized life coming together and they broke breads in their homes and they ate with glad and sincere hearts, praising God, enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved all together. So I love the church. I love the church because I was separated, divided, and a church that came together did an outreach I gave my life to Jesus Christ because they put their money together and they put their efforts together and they reached out to other people. I got saved because the church came together. It was not a divided church. It was not compartmentalized people. They were serving God on Saturday and serving God on Monday and they did an outreach on a Friday. That's why I love the church. I believe Highlands is the best spiritual chicken pot pie there is. Oh, clap your hands if you believe that. Oh, Dino... That is so simple. You preach such a simple message. It's kind of like what Jesus said to the experts. I'm so glad I'm in the family of God. I'm glad I'm no longer disconnected, disjoined, broken up, and broken down. You don't have to be. You're welcome here. We need you. Jump in. God's got a plan for your life. We'd love to walk with you. Amen. Amen. Bow our heads, let's pray together. Father, we thank you for scripture. We thank you for the truth of the word. Lord, I thank you that your Holy Spirit shows up and there's the repentance of sin and people begin to move from 
D's and C's and B's and A's like me. I was a D. I was a D. I was living the life of a D. And because a church came together and lived out the gospel, I moved to a C for two weeks. Then I became a B. And Lord, this weekend I checked A. And I'm going to love you with all my heart, my mind, my soul. Forever. And I want to love others. And see them move across your plan for their life. Maybe you're here today and I'm going to pray for you. You say, Dino, my life is so compartmentalized. I feel broke up. I feel broke down. I feel ripped apart. I want to put my life back together again. I want to put it back together again in the family of God and family. It's gotten complicated and confusing. I've listened to the wrong voices. And there are many voices in my head. I just want to love God with everything. That's all I've ever wanted to do is love God. And then every single day, all together, just love others in the way that God has made me, shaped me. Because I know that I've been saved to serve. I know that. I know I've been saved to serve. So Lord, help me to Put my life, put me back together again in the family of God. Put me back together again. All across this room and at every campus. If you're here today, I just want to take a moment, then we're going to pray and go back into worship. But if you're here and you sense, I feel like my life is fragmented and frustrated. I just feel like my life is so compartmentalized. I'm not enjoying the love of God and the life of God. It's not happening currently. I just feel like I want to give that moment for someone to say, can you pray for me? Because I want to leave here in the simplicity of loving God and love. I just want to live my life in the love of God. If that's you at every campus and all across Grace, if that's you, say, Dino, can you pray for me? Just go take a moment. Then I'm going to pray for you. If that's you, can you slip your hand up? Say, Dino, pray for me. I just feel pulled apart. I feel so compartmentalized in your life. Thank you, thank you. I see hands going up all across the main floor and the raised seating, other locations. Dino, just pray for me. I just want to get back to the love of God. Thank you. That's amazing. I love the honesty of our church. Can we all stand? Let me pray for you. Every location. Let's shut our hands and let's, if you can, if you feel comfortable, let's just lift our hands up to God in any way that is comfortable for you. Just say words like, Lord, I surrender to your plan. I surrender to the love of God. So I'm deciding today to love you with everything. To love you with all my heart and everything that's in my heart. Even a heavy heart, a broken heart, a, a shameful heart, maybe even a condemned heart. I, I love you with all of my heart. And Lord, I, I decide that I'm giving you my mind. And sometimes my mind is, is not a good place. And sometimes my mind feels dark and my mind feels pulled and, and my mind feels fragmented and, and my mind feels anxious. But I, I'm loving you with my mind. And, and Lord, I give you my soul and all these many emotions and these feelings that I have and, and these thoughts that I have that sometimes are not you. And, and so I surrender my heart and my mind and, and my thoughts to you, God. I just surrender everything to you. I submit everything to you. I bow down my heart to you, God. And I'm, I'm making a decision tonight to love you with everything. No more compartments. Not Sunday, but every day. Not a moment, but every moment. I'm going to live for you and I'm going to love you. Because I'm loving you, Lord. I'm going to love others. And I'm going to thank you for the preeminence of Christ in my life forgiveness and grace and mercy and new beginnings so I thank you for that so Lord thank you for a new beginning thank you for Lord for for a fresh start Lord thank you that on this Wednesday Lord no more compartments 
Lord, I am all together healed. I am all together whole. I am all together restored. I am all together redeemed. I am all together forgiven. And I am all together in the family of God. I belong in the family of God. I belong in this church. I belong in fellowship. I belong in community. In Jesus' name.